said or done something that, that, that's really terrible. Now, if you'll just give me some hint as, as to what it is, um, I'll, I'll try to explain it. I'll try to make it better. Maybe we ought to go back to uh, where all this started, huh? You remember last weekend I, I asked you to go skiing with me? And you turned me down. Now, at the time, I thought you weren't giving me the real reason why, am I right? Yes. Well, since then, there has been absolutely nothing. Do you know how many times I've phoned you? I mean, did you get the messages? Well, you haven't phoned me back. Now, <laughs> that's very unlike you. I mean, it's not like the girl that I've known. I mean, from, from the beginning, you have been thoughtful and sensitive. And, unless you're trying to let me down easy. Would you please look at me when I'm talking to you? What's going on? Peter, I've told you how I felt about you. I, I thought you enjoyed being with me and that, that we both felt... I did. Well, look, have I done or said something that has changed your opinion? No, not you. Well, then, I, I, I don't understand. I mean, what has happened? Please don't make me pry it out of you. Tell me what it is. Tell me what it is, and I will try to do something about it. There's nothing that you can do. Well, obviously, if you won't tell me what the problem is. Please. It's no use, Peter. Dorian told me. Told you what? About you and her. And obviously, I can't go on seeing you knowing. <laughs> knowing what? Don't make me say it. Lynn, will you please answer me? You and Dorian are lovers. <laughs> Yeah. But Karen makes it worse than it has to be. She doesn't do anything to the 
last minute. Who are you having for dinner? Pat and Paul. It was going to be really sad with, with them there, but not Brian. Oh, I know, honey. I, I can understand that. Yeah. How come you're not coming over? <sighs> well, because I wasn't invited. How come? You're the best friend we have. Well, thank you, but... Well, we work together all day at the office, and so in the evening we like to spend time with friends we don't see very often. Yeah, but when Daddy and Karen were out living together, we saw you at night, even though you worked with Daddy during the day. You want to know something? You are a very sharp cookie. Hey, speaking of cookies, uh, do coconut twist drop cookies turn you on? Terrific. They turn you on? Great. Well, listen, I'll get some of those. And I'll put that record on you like so much. What is it, the, uh, the Sorcerer's Apprentice? Or wait, no, wait, here is it. Gracious, wait a minute. Here we go. Now, you listen to this. And I'll bring out some cookies, and then when I get back, we'll sit and talk about the story that the music is telling, okay? Great. Okay, now you listen carefully. I was. You don't approve of this, do you? You think I'm 
not thinking no such a thing. I'm sorry, Mama. I'm sorry. That's what I'm thinking. That's the problem. And I never dreamed that two courses would involve so much reading. I read until late last night. I read on my lunch hour. I, I read coming home on the bus. It's incredible. Oh, you'll get used to it. We don't panic. Look, work out a system how to study, and you'll be just great. Are you sure? Mm. And why were you frowning? Oh, well, I don't know what my expressions were, as we are, but I, well, I just thought by you going back to school, it would make you very happy. At the moment, all it's making me is terrified. Do you know how old most of the kids are in my class? Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty-one. Every last one of them looks brighter than I am. <laughs> they just feel younger and more eager and more relaxed than you do. You know why it's so hard for you to go back to school at your age? Why? Because you are out of practice. Oh, boy. Am I ever. <laughs> but in time, you'll learn how to concentrate, how to read faster, and do all the things you're supposed to do. Oh. <laughs> Will you do me a favor? Uh, will you whisper that in my ear every five minutes? Uh, yeah, of course I will. But I don't think it's going to make you concentrate on what you're reading any better. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> hey, what are you still doing here? I just want to be on your way to school by now. Oh, my God. I should have left five minutes ago. Oh, uh, that's terrific. I can't even get there on time, much less do the work. Uh, I won't get a seat up front. They'll all look at me as if I'm too ancient to even make it through the snow to get there. Mama, will you cook? I'll do the dishes as soon as I come home. That's the promise. And honey, the hot water faucet in the bathroom what? is leaking. So long, guys. Oh, I'm very careful, sweetheart. <laughs> What's that bundle of anxiety that just went out the door, my wife? Oh, well, sort of. Whew. Too ancient to get through the snow? Oh, look at She's not making much sense right now, but I think once she settles down, she'll be all right. Yeah, well. Hey, Sadie. Yeah? Would you do me the honor of having a beer with me? Only if you make it a double. <laughs> you're, uh... You know, I'm always glad you're around here, but I'm especially glad you're here now. Because I have a feeling it's going to be a pretty lonely spring. Hello, Chip. It's Peter Jansen. What is... She's not? Look, um, when will she be home? All right, look, just yeah, tell her I'll call later. Yeah. Thank you. Goodbye. She really doesn't think that the same position for her, does she? Well, probably. <laughs> But I don't think she wants us to uh, think that she's shirking her wifely duties or something. Are you serious about that, aren't you? Oh, not really. Oh, uh, maybe, uh, maybe a little. Yeah. Say, do you get to the feeling we're uh, getting a little confused about our Carla? I mean, who she is and what she wants? Yeah, I really do, but it's all right, uh, Ed, because I think she's feeling that same confusion. Yeah, well, I guess she is. I'm going to ask you a very loaded question. Loaded? Why is it loaded? Uh, because if you don't answer it right, I'm going to kick you out of here, bag and baggage. <laughs> Go ahead. On a scale of one to ten, what would you say our marriage is? I mean, Carla. Eight and a half. Really? Sure. Now, what can I say? Oh, come on. <laughs> I was afraid you were going to say about a five, because sometimes I feel it's about a three. Oh, Ed. Oh, now, that's, that's a, a really low opinion of your marriage, now, don't you think? Well, not really. It's just some of the things I sense about her, all her yearnings. And, you know, well, it's a famous thing, you know, because we, 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 we have these uh, silent, unspoken agreements about our lives. I mean, certain things in our life, you know? Yeah. Well, I like the fact that we still live here in an apartment. Not in a house with a with a mortgage. Mm. The fact that we haven't had any children of our own. Well, I didn't think you two ever talked about that. Oh yeah, like I said, it was an, uns an unspoken agreement, didn't it? <sighs> they're just things we agree on, just by ignoring them, you know. And they're things that are kind of in the area of uh, not making a commitment, they're of permanence. Mm. And then I didn't think about it that way. Well, listen, tell me now, if you're right, uh, would that bother you?
bother you. Well, I didn't used to, but I'm beginning to think about it now. I mean, there must be some reason we don't seem to want to tie ourselves down. Oh, why don't you talk to Grandma about it? I mean, don't you think it's time you should get off this unspoken level? Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right, Sadie. And I think I will. Good night. Something else for you. <laughs> if you like it. 
and I hope you do anyway. Here. Do you remember when that was taken? It was in uh, the springtime, and we were on a picnic. Yeah, we had a lot of fun that day, didn't we? Thank you. 
Cloudy must be very proud of him. Yes, we are. Uh, speaking of Larry, where is he any, anyway? Oh, he, um, uh, he's on his way, I'm, sh I'm sure. Unless it was a, an emergency at the, the hospital or the free clinic that seems to pop up all the time.
Well, uh, I think we better get going, huh? I do have some work to do and have to go to the office tomorrow, so... Uh, yes, uh, thank you. It, um, it, it was a delicious dinner. It sure was. Thank you, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yes, and it was very good for me to get out of the house. Gotta do it again, then. Yeah, next time, our place. <laughs>
every bar across the country. It's indecent. It's not indecent. You're just an old prude. That's all. Any women across the country are wearing brassieres, except for those few that are too liberated or, or don't really need them. Now, Wanda, I don't want to talk about them things anymore. Any honey, we're on our own kitchen, and it's just you and me. Well, I don't care. I don't want to hear any more about it. Oh, I understand. Brassieres are to be seen but not heard. Is that it? Wanda, I am going to bed. And you are going to shut up. <gasps> oh, no, I am not, Vinny. Now, I've got some human rights around here, and they are being trampled on. Now, you listen to me. I like making commercials. And I'm going to go on making commercials just as long as I want to. And if you don't like it, that's just too bad about you. She liked to drink. But I hope you don't act like her because she was a tramp. You know what that brought her the nerve to do? No, and I don't think I really can. She broke up with me Christmas Eve. Can you believe it? Christmas Eve? Well, she beat me, Eddie. She left me Christmas Eve for some guy she'd met just a few days before. I guess he had more money or something. What a tramp. Oh, no, it's maybe she's happy now. Did you know something? She was dumb. Because she broke up with me before I gave her a Christmas present. It cost me a bundle. Yeah, it's this bracelet here. Look, I got it on. Cooking for a crowd, that 
she said she had to cook for less than ten. She didn't know how to start. Oh, that must have been so wonderful. Yeah. Well, there were some drawbacks, you know. I mean, during the Depression, there were a lot of hand-me-down clothes and leftover meals. But I bet my mama had a hundred ways to stretch one pound of hamburger. But it was nice and warm and comforting. Uh, did you ever fight with your brothers and sisters? You betcha. Oh, I remember one time really fighting it out with my sister Maud. It was about an old doll carriage that we found in somebody's trash. Who won? You know, I don't remember. I think maybe Papa had to intervene with some kind of decision, like Morty could play with it one day and then I'd play with it next. You see, that's how it was with us. When things got bad, Mama and Papa would step in. Well, maybe that's why Dorian and I, uh... Yeah. Yeah, go, go on. Well, uh, when my parents died, it was just the two of us. And Dorian was older. So she got the doll carriage. Yeah. Well, I'm making it sound like I had a really deprived childhood. But I didn't. I mean, not by any stretch of the imagination. It's just that when Dorian and I both wanted something... You know, Dorian played the piano when she was little. And I... Oh, did I want to take lessons so I could learn. Well, you did. And that time you won. She just got discouraged. I mean, she didn't progress as fast as she thought that she should. Don't kid yourself. You were better than she was, so she didn't want to compete. Maybe. Well, anyway, she got interested in other things. I mean, well, you know, she went on to medical school. Uh-huh. But somehow, you were still tied to her. Yes. I've never quite understood why. You know, I was a grown woman when Dorian was in medical school, and I still wasn't able to be on my own. And the terrible thing is that even now... You know, Mrs. Hopkins, I, I think I made a terrible mistake coming here. I mean, I never should have come to Landview to try to start my life over. Why did you come back then? <sighs> well, I, I guess I uh, wanted the, uh, the hardest possible challenge. I mean, I wanted to make it on my own right under Dorian's nose. And now, now I wonder. Maybe there's a, there's a part of me that, that needed her. I mean, maybe I wanted her nearby just in case I stumbled and fell. Well, you cut it out. I mean, look, you're doing fine, all on your own. Well, I thought so too, till now. Be good to you, baby. Just you wait and see. Please, please don't call me that. What, baby? I said please don't. Oh, I get it. It's somebody else's pet name, right? Uh, listen, um, yeah, I think I better go now. Oh, wait, what are you talking about? We just got here. No, I, I know. It's just that I left my little boy alone, and I don't think I want to leave him alone too long. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What did I do wrong? Nothing. It, it's just that I... You asked me to be nice to you, and I fully intend to do that. Yes, you remember this? Of course, you have to be nice to me, too. Oh. You must like me. You must like me a lot to want to give me that. And I sure do. You maybe even love me a little, don't you? I think you're fantastic. And I think I'm going to think you're more fantastic before long. Oh, you might. But I'll tell you, there's one thing I know. You're going to say that you never experienced anything like it before. Now, do you love me a little? I love you, Karen. Jenny, you are what they used to call in the good old days, a 
Holland scold. Women used to get the ducking stool for what you're doing right now. You're trying to make me mad. It won't work. Just telling you. But, Brad, would you really rather have been with them than, than to be home? Well, you're trying to trap me into saying yes? <laughs> I called the co-op. I told myself a long time ago that I was not going to be one of those wives. But lately, I... So I called them, and the guard answered, and he said that you had left around 9 o'clock. And I said, fine, that means he's going to be home any minute now. And then it was 10 o'clock, and then it was 10.30, and then I realized what you were doing. You were waiting to be sure that I was asleep before you came home. Why would I do that? Because you don't want to make love to me. But I think you only knew how that makes me so upset, see you tearing yourself apart now like listen, that. Okay. What happened this morning has nothing to do with tonight. Don't you see? Don't you understand? I have a machine gun pointed right at me. Well, I don't understand. Well, then you haven't been paying attention. You all the, those phone calls from Dorian Lord and that, that financial statement I whipped up specially for her benefit. It's all backfired. Why? What happened? <sighs> well, let me see if I can summarize it here. Uh, Madam Lord, in all her power and glory, has a devoted minion, a certain CPA by the name of R.P. Herbst. Are you following me? I think so. All right, well, uh, Mr. Herbst read my financial statement and concluded that, yes, indeedy, the club was certainly alive and well. In fact, that Dorian should start pulling out the principal on her loan. What does that mean? That means that by the close of business on Friday, I've got to come up with 2,500 bucks to give to Dorian Lord. You've got it, don't you? I mean, the financial statement says that everything... Jenny, the financial statement was a lot of eyewash. <laughs> he told me that the bottom line... The bottom that... line was just showed a healthy balance for the end of February on paper. You mean the money's not available? That's right. Well, what happened to it? Well, among other things, I have a drawing account, which I didn't put into the statement grounds that it made the balance look better. You mean you were taking money without anyone knowing about it? I knew about it. Jenny, you can't embezzle from yourself. Oh, Brad, I know. That's not what I meant. Oh, look, it doesn't matter anyway. That's right. If I don't come up with the money, Dorian Lord is going to take over the business. But that is my problem. That is not for you to worry about. How can I not worry about it when you're so upset? Look, if worse comes to worse, I can always get the money from Dad. I don't want to do it, but if I have to, I will. <sighs> anyway, <sighs> going back to bed. Let me worry about it, all right? <laughs> Daddy comes home and finds him, gets all upset. Go on. I'll be 
football game is postponed indefinitely? Can we get one more guy? Yes, that's four. Oh, really? To play two on two. Oh, <laughs> you're gonna have to forgive me, Danny. When it comes to sports, I'm afraid I'm a little dumb. I mean, you never played sports when you were a kid? Well, yeah, you know, tennis and swimming. We have a girls' volleyball team in our school. They beat the boys last week. They did? Well, hey, terrific. Let's hear one for the girls. Yeah, but we'll get the next one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, would you like to learn how to play basketball? What, you mean now, today? If it's, okay, if it's okay with Jimmy, you can be a fourth one. Oh? Yeah, you and Jimmy stand me and Eddie. See, Jimmy's the best out of all three of us, so that would make the teams a little even. Well, thank you for asking me, but I've got work to do today. Uh, maybe next time, okay? Yeah, I'd love that. Hey, you want some more cookies? Sure, thanks. Can I take you after something? No, sure, I'm what? Where does town go at night? Anyway, he, he told me a rather disturbing story. 
story. I, I don't think that the details are that important, but the essence of it was that Karen went out late last night and left him alone. Larry was at the hospital, and when she came back, she told him where she'd been, but, well, he thought it was a transparent lie. And Danny recognized it as such? Oh, immediately. Had he told his father? No. Oh, and he put you on a spot by telling you the story. Exactly. Look, I, I don't care what Karen does or where she goes. It's none of my business. But I do care about Danny. I mean, he, he told me this thing in a very matter-of-fact way, but he seemed quite disturbed about it. He, he asked me if, if I should, well, if he should tell his father. And I said, well, I didn't know what to say. And, then, and yet I know if, if I do tell Larry that Karen will explode and, and she'll, she'll think that my motives were something else. And, all right. I think I'm going to have a talk with Larry soon. I'll make it casual, and I won't say that you told me anything, but I do think he has a right to know what's going on. I do too. And I feel concerned about Danny. I don't think he should be left home alone like that. Of course not. Of course. Oh, I'm sure you're thinking the same thing I am. How can a marriage like that have any kind of a future? Strange, you called me when you did, Dorian. Oh? I need to talk to you. Are you free for lunch today? Oh, well, let me check my calendar and I'll see. Yes, I happen to be clear this afternoon. Um, where and when? You name it. All right. Um, why don't you come over here? We could, uh, well, we could have, have lunch in front of the fire. Fine. Um, 12.30, okay? Fine, any time. Any time you can make it will be just great. Listen, I know you're busy, so I won't bother you anymore, and... Uh, Dorian, listen, have you spoken to Lynn today? No, I haven't. Why? Never mind. We can talk about it at lunch. I'll see you at 12.30, right? Mm -hmm.
remember our motto. And a Gainesburg citizen covers West Carolina like to do. <laughs> Bye now.
kill him? Yeah, no, I ran into him. He was playing basketball. He said he'd been mooching cookies for me all morning. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. For what? For taking an interest. To him and he sort of clammed up on me, you know, almost as if he were mad at me or worried about something. I asked him about it. I couldn't drag anything out of him, though. Oh, well, Larry, I wish I could help you. Uh... Well, that's, I'll see you later, hopefully. Okay. okay. You take it easy, huh? Yeah.
I was hoping you might have some uh, wine and cheese at your place, like last time. Fine. Well, uh, don't be too enthusiastic. <laughs> How are you ever going to get any? 